Natasha. Doing gymnastics with a chronic illness can be really difficult. My body causes me to have life-threatening allergic reactions to seemingly nothing. So sweating or crying can be a trigger. I've nearly died from laughing too much with my friends. But I love being able to fly through the air and flip and twist and spin. It's just something that feels really free to me. My name's Natasha Coates and I'm an elite disability gymnast. I was number one in the UK for four years running. I have won 22 British titles and 38 British medals. I started gymnastics when I was eight years old at my local recreational club and I've been doing gymnastics ever since. My condition didn't become severe till I was 18. One day I went into anaphylactic shock. It was completely out of the blue, nobody knew what caused it. Mass activation syndrome is a rare condition that affects your immune system. So when you get stung by a nettle, you get a raised itchy bump. That's from histamine, which is released from the mast cell. My body does that when there's no trigger. I can be sat in my room doing nothing, nothing's changed, and those cells just switch and release all those chemicals, which send me into anaphylactic shock. So just as somebody who had a nut allergy, if they ate peanuts, their throat would swell, their tongue would swell, they struggle to breathe because your airway's shutting and you feel like you're gonna suffocate to death. And that is a real possibility with this condition. There are some that are caused by triggers. So I know things such as getting too hot or too cold can cause a reaction. Certain foods can be an issue, strong smells, strong emotions can be a trigger. I'm literally allergic to everything. <laughs> Quite an itch. <laughs> Seemingly fitting. Training. When I became unwell, I still wanted to carry on. I just wanted to adapt to it. There can be a lot of contradicting points between having mass activation syndrome and gymnastics. My diet is quite restricted. I'm quite malnourished with iron and things like that. Sometimes the exercises can be really, really hard, but I enjoy building up my strength and seeing an improvement in myself. Unfortunately, it takes me quite a lot longer than everybody else that's able-bodied, but that almost makes the victory that little bit sweeter. Sometimes I do push myself too far and I regret it and I end up paying for it. I have lost count of how many times I've been in hospitals. It's way over 500 times. It works out on average every two weeks. It's got to the stage where most of the staff know me by my first name and I knew them by their first name. Thanks to social media, I've been able to get in contact with people that have the same condition as me. Most of them are in America and we have this lovely little group of about four or five of us. I am the only one from England and we are constantly joking about my accent between us. And they really are like my sisters. Unfortunately, a couple of years ago, one of the girls, Taylor, passed away. She'd been quite unwell. It was really hard. Um, not just to lose my best friend, but the reality of the condition that I'm living with. Because as much as you can try and make it as lighthearted as possible, it is life-threatening and the chances are it will kill me one day. Seeing the pain that I went through when she passed and knowing that one day all the people that I love and care about are going to feel that same pain. It's a really hard thing to carry and sometimes I want to cut myself up from the world so when it does happen, it doesn't hurt them. But I need them, I need my friends and they need me. I've had many conversations with them about it because we're very open. They're just happy that I'm happy with what I'm doing and I'm really blessed to have them. It's not the medals that count for me, it's the experience. I love to go out and perform and show people that just because you're ill doesn't mean your life has to stop. Hey everybody, my name is Drew Beebe and I'm here in my terrible home studio that I've made during quarantine. And I wanted to tell you about our new podcast called Great Big Story. It's got more surprising and delightful stories just like this one. So head over to Apple Podcasts, to Spotify, wherever you get your favorite podcasts and download Great Big Story.